Hi, I'm Viet Anh from Islander, and this is 26 Questions with Viet Anh. Hi Viet Anh, this is Mark with NextC. Glad to have you today on our interview. Uh, super excited to ask you all these questions that the community has. I'm very excited. Awesome, cool. So starting off with the first question from the community. Tell us more about the growth of the Islander team globally and what your development methodology looks like. Okay, so uh, we actually started from Vietnam and right now, you know, we have been working on this project for like six months now. And, you know, in the case of Islander, it's very funny in a way that we have to solve a chicken and egg problem in order to, you know, increase and then try to attract the projects. We have to have the community, vice versa, if we can attract the projects. Uh, to partner with us and to provide values in the in the Islander platform, then we need the community, and we do it by you know like solving two equations at the same time. So we try to partner with very good projects like Avalanche, Kalao, Coloni, Tailcraft, Pangolin, etc. At the same time, you know we try to partner with some communities of users and some KOLs influencer as well, Tradecoin Vietnam, Kairos, or Mohabit Capital, etc. And by doing so, you know, we, we kind of like, we try to solve the problem and we try to connect the two parties. And we're very excited that uh, at the moment we have quite a large community right now and ready for launch. Awesome. Thank you for answering that one. Uh, question number two, what's the first thing you would like people to think of when Islander is mentioned to them? I want people to know of Islander as, as you know, a uh, learn to earn and decentralized platform, you know, to manage and market the projects, your, your crypto projects in a unique way. So we utilize gamification and to make the, the concept more fun and engaging to the people and to all party involved could be, you know, project owners, could be crypto enthusiasts, influencers, and also, you know, content creators in the future. Awesome. Thank you for answering that one as well. Question number three from the community. What are the major features or benefits of your project that set it apart from others on the market? Because, you know, Islander is a learn to earn project, learn to earn platform, which focuses on, you know, knowledge adoption with a touch of gamification and earning monetary benefits uh, at the same time. So with Islander, you know, blockchain projects will be able to apply many interesting game elements into, you know, the promotion of their projects, such as, you know, game visuals, narrations, quest, reward system, leaderboards, and so much more. So, you know, our aim is not only to create a game, but to make investing in marketing a game. I see. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. That sounds awesome. Uh, which one of these aspects is important for you? And the question has four bullet points increasing token mm. price and value, empowering mm. platform development, building community trust, or expanding partnerships globally and in one order. For us, I think community has always been first priority of ours. So I would say, you know, building community trust is the first one. And second one is empowering platform development because we believe that by creating a good product, then, you know, you can serve more and more clients, more and more customers. And when you serve them well, then, uh, you know, more things, interesting things will come along. And then it comes to the partnership because for a project like Islander, if we can make a lot of partnership with good projects out there, it means we can provide more values to the community that follow us. And then, uh, you know, token price and values will be the results of our good work. So I put that at the, the end of the four priorities, like priority list here. Yeah. Totally agree on that one. Makes a lot mm -hmm. of sense. And uh, yeah, that's a good structure way of organizing your project in any case. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, great. So moving on to question number five. Uh, I can't find enough information about your tokenomics on the website. Mm -hmm. Can you provide more details and what percentage of bets have you made? Will your platform go the coin burning route? Meaning like, will you burn tokens? And I guess that's what the uh, viewer is mm -hmm. referring to. So basically, I think uh, the token metrics Tokenomics is available on the website. That's the first thing I want to confirm. Uh, you can go to theislander.io and you can check our white paper or our deck. So you can see the token metrics there, or you can also check for the token metrics on our medium as well. So yeah, that's one, one note. And, you know, like to provide more details on the, the token metrics, of course, you know, I can say something about the token use cases, token utility for the platform. So basically, you know, our token ISA will be used to pay for platform services like you know to for, for users to do more quests to get more more like uh, affiliate and learn to an activities going on and for projects 
to you know acquire marketing services from our platform or for content creators to to mean NFT tickets to access to you know their exclusive content. Uh, also, it could, could, could be used to stake, to tier up, and earn more you know platform rewards with more platform benefits. And of course, we will have the burn mechanism. Uh, so uh, we will collect a platform fee for helping projects and connecting projects and community users. And a part of that platform fee will be burned by us to reduce the total supply in the long run. Logic here is that if we can decrease the total supply, but at the same time, you know, we can increase the total demand by growing our the popularity of our project, of our platform, then, you know, the value for holders, the value for people who hold our tokens will be higher in the long run. Yeah, that makes total sense. Uh, thank you for mm -hmm. answering that one. Uh, yeah, guys, do go ahead and check out the tokenomics on the website. Okay, great. So uh, question number six, uh, can you share your fundraising situation and how your private mm -hmm. and public offering tokens are distributed? And what are the plans for the next IEO? I think uh, we have closed, because we have been working on this project for like half a year now. So we closed our seat and private uh, fundraising uh, with, you know, almost like a one and a half million US dollar raised, uh, like two months ago, one or two months ago. And now, you know, we are holding the IDE, which is a special IDEO event. We call that uh, initial distribution event, IDE mm -hmm. here with Avalanche uh, to raise another like uh, 300K from the public sale. Uh, you can, you know, follow us or Avalanche to, to you know, know more about this event. But yeah, that's basically the situation right now. And after we are listing on, on DEXs, which we will probably like Trader Joe and Pangolin, and we will, we want to perform real well there first. And then we'll think about, you know, moving to exchanges. And of course, you know, we're talking with a lot of uh, new exchanges and MXC is is one, one of the, the options here. And I'm very happy that we are, you know, working in, together here and we're having this conversation right now. Yeah, likewise, uh, very pleased to have you guys uh, definitely part of our uh, platform. Uh, by the way, how did the Avalanche partnership come into place? Like, how did that happen for you? Just a question for me. I mean, uh, Avalanche is our trusted partner from the very beginning. It's uh, when we started with this project, I was introduced to Avalanche and, you know, I was very impressed by how they work, uh, impressed by the, the work that Mark and Dev is, is, you know, they are building there in Avalanche. I think they, they have the right mindset. The relationship has been going on for, as I said, you know, almost like half a year now. And you, you might know that in the world of crypto, you know, half a year means a long time. And we have a very close relationship and we have been, you know, through a lot of twists and turns, a lot of changes in plans and everything. And uh, Avalanche has been around and helping us going through all of those steps and uh right now you know the fact that we can do something unprecedented and something interesting with them is a thing that i'm very happy that we could do together yeah i'm excited for you guys that's that's really awesome and i hope your partnership will uh, bear lots of good fruit for you so to speak and uh, in, in your endeavors okay awesome thank you thank for you. answering uh, my personal question now moving on to question number seven from the community what strategy will you implement to bring non-crypto natives into the isa ecosystem how do you keep a balance between developing the technology and also improving the value of the isa token sure i think it's a very interesting question and uh to answer this one, I have to say a, a bit about our background as well. So we are a team inspiring we uh, in Vietnam, you know, which we have been building for like five to six years now. The name is Spyroom, and that's called like uh, Medium of Vietnam for reference. So basically, it's a social media platform for young people to share, you know, ideas and knowledge with uh, around 100k users and millions of visitors monthly through, you know, other channels such as, you know, website, YouTube, Facebook, etc. So it's uh, an advantage for us, you know, to get the attention of non-crypto users from Spyroom to become involved in the blockchain ecosystem after we have developed, uh, you know, Islander to be more stable and to be more steady, right? Uh, you know, thanks to thanks to this uh, relationship with Spyroom, I think more non-crypto investors will be attracted to join us in the future. And, uh, we, we, we wish that, you know, we can expand it and with the help of having Spyroom here, we can optimize for the solution to plug into, you know, existing communities like Spyroom. And then we can try to expand by, you know, like using that case as an example and, you know, try to become the bridge to connect 
the world of crypto with the world of, you know, like uh, traditional web and traditional and existing communities out there, which is huge and fast. Okay, yeah, that sounds awesome. It's definitely great to have community as such as you just described to um, back you up and make sure that you are, you know, you have a lot of plenty of support going along the way. Question number eight, in the future, will Islander be the first uh, step and the ideal place for all new crypto projects to gain public attention before launching their IDO in different launch paths? I don't know how relevant that to you guys is, but uh, that's the question we got. So I think uh, of course that's very interesting questions. That's why, as I said, you know, we we have been having a quite a close relationship with Avalanche. So this is sort of like a side note here, because we also think of us think of ourselves that way. So I don't know, you know, you wish Aranda will be considered, you know, an, an innovative marketing sort of like uh, solution for new projects out there. So when projects join with us on our platform, you know, their communities would be grown more effectively with, you know, the strong support from our community and the community of our KOLs, influencers, you know, through affiliate marketing activities that we could organize with our community. Uh, and we will we want to help the projects to get the attention from a vast of you know islander users and it's very important for us that we can help projects to attract and educate their users which you know in turn will help them grow sustainably in a long time because i mean right now the situation with uh, a lot of projects is that uh, in order to go for you know a lot of like like big numbers of followers big numbers uh, people who you know follow you on twitter telegram etc uh, sometimes it's uh, it's painful to kind of like attract people who don't actually care about the, the projects uh, yeah. at all. So we want to add another layer here to make sure that we can help projects to not only attract the number, but also attract the quality. For sure. Yeah, that, that's the most important thing. It's the, the quality of your followers, the quality of what you're doing. Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. d definitely with you on that one. Uh, question number nine, staking is one of the strategies to attract users and hold them for a long term. Uh, does your great project have a plan on staking? Yes, definitely. You know, our staking features will be released soon after we launch on mainnet, which will be, you know, at the end of this month. Uh, you know, on Islander, you can stake our tokens not only to earn from the staking reserve, but, you know, also to tier up and have more benefits to earn more through, you know, learn to earn and share to earn activities on our platform. For example, you know, you can do more quests, you can share more affiliate links, and then, you know, you can earn more through those kind of activities. Uh, the next question actually is related to some of the information that you have already provided. So if you feel like you have something to add, please do so. And it sounds like this in what way will islander project help or contribute to the world of crypto right now if, if you look at the the market you will see that uh, there have always been uh, huge obstacles in you know the lack of tools and lack of know-how that you know help the adoption and uh, the promotion of blockchain projects for for the to the newcomer investors so with that in mind you know we see the opportunity of using you know smart contract and decentralized technology to you know solve crypto project problems uh, by you know automate the airdrop activities you know and efficiently attract the right investors and supporters who should be able to understand something about the projects instead of just coming as you know like i don't know like maybe airdrop hunters and we'll go right away after you get your rewards uh and also you know we will support affiliate marketing and automate reward distribution for projects influencers and crypto enthusiastics because we believe that that will save a lot of time and effort from each and and each party and help them to be more focused on understanding and building what the thing that matter the most which is the project themselves and which is the ideas the core things the core values that each project is aiming to solve right. and yeah that's uh, basically what we we think that if we can save up a lot of people's time and and connect different kind of sources I think mm -hmm. that would provide a lot of values to the world crypto in general. For sure, yeah. And it's good that you have a lot of programs to incentivize your community to become a part and contribute and uh, yeah, feel like they're like it's their home. Trust is very important in business. What makes investors, customers, and users feel safe when working with your project? So first thing is that, uh, I mean, if you guys have followed us from day one of our journey, you probably would have known that, you know, we have always been very clear and transparent to our community of what we are building. Uh, and if you have followed us, you have known that, you know, we've always put, you know, the highest priority on honesty and integrity in what we do. That's why we have, uh, we have, we are very good friends of Avalanche because they also share the same kind of values here and we really appreciate it. 
uh, we learned a lot from them. Uh, and you know, more more of a, you know, because as we are a team with uh, track reports of building, you know, sustainable and community driven products in Vietnam, as I mentioned previously, is uh, Spiral Made Vietnam. Uh, and we have been working together for like, you know, years with, you know, countless of challenges, hardships and, and twists and turns. A lot of things have gone, have, have, you know, we have been through. Uh, and we believe that, you know, through those kind of experience, uh, we, we, and through our entrepreneurial journey, uh, it could be, you know, the evidence for our commitment and dedication. And I hope that people can trust us in, in that sense. In Why would you say that choosing AVAX, well, Avalanche, uh, brings the most benefit to the community? All right. I think um, the reason why we we chose Avalanche is, you know, first of course, you know, Avalanche is great as a as a blockchain, right? It has very u good UX and speed and rapid growth. That's amazing. But at the same time, we are we're amazed by the people uh, behind Avalanche and also the people in the Avalanche ecosystem. I think Avalanche ecosystem is is very potential and have a lot of like builders, uh, very serious builders in the in the ecosystem. And uh, because, you know, it's, it's not very crowded at the moment, I think uh, choosing Avalanche and building on Avalanche help us to get connected with, let's say, for example, people like Avalanche, the Avalanche team, right? Or people on other team, very prominent teams like Pangolin or, um, I don't know, Kalao, Poloni. So I, if we had chosen like a more crowded chain, I would have said that probably we would not be able to have very good partnership, which is very crucial for our growth at the very beginning. So I think choosing Avax is, is a very good choice. Yeah, that makes sense. That explains it. <laughs> what kind of plans do you have to encourage everyone to choose the Islander project? Yeah, that's a tough one, right? Yeah, yeah, it's very tough. I think um, what we, we intend to do is we will have to attract, as I said, you know, from the very beginning, we have to solve the chicken and egg problem. And uh, first, we have to try to attract the crypto projects because, and in order to attract the crypto projects, we have to make sure that our solution is good for them to, and solve the right problems that they're having. Uh, so right now, I think we're doing quite well on that sense because we have quite a lot of strong partnership especially in the avalanche ecosystem and we want to focus on the avalanche ecosystem first before you know expanding to other ecosystem as well um so that's the first part we have to be at least we have to listen to the market listen to what people are saying listen to the diff difficulties that people are facing and try to solve and try to bring out a solution that will solve all of those problems and try to be very genuine very you know, open with the people and try to get the partnership that that is essential for our initial growth. And then um, the communities part is also a very important part. So uh, we grew community through, you know, partnership with different kind of communities, different kind of careers, influencers. And we do that by at the same time, trying to be open, trying to understand from their perspectives, trying to be very, uh, you know, trying to, you know, kind of like gain an own trust from them because they will be the one who will go with us for a long time and they will be the ones who who help us to raise the community and i do think that if we can do it well enough then we can have a very strong community and that would be good for for the starting point and based on that we can move on and try to you know try to grow sustainably okay uh, what are your plans for the security of Islander project? So basically for the security part, it's a very, it's a high, sort of like a high priority for us. So that's why we have our contract audited very early by Hacken. And uh, the results was very, uh, very good. So basically right now, that is one thing uh, that uh, has been solved from the very beginning. And we will try to make sure that for a project like Islander, right? It's uh, one of the things that could possibly be happening and could possibly should be paid enough attention is uh, the fact that you know uh, cheating or hacking and for for that matter of course we have a team that is dedicated for the purpose and we run uh, on test for example we run a test net uh, before on, on viral sweep and we kind of like not not only to for people to 
experience our, our project, but at the same time to see the patterns and to see what kind of things that we could do to prevent those kind of like cheating activities going on. And we're, we're very happy that right now we have developed some, to some extent, um, you know, solutions that could minimize the, the impacts of those bad behaviors. In the future, of course, we'll listen and we'll kind of like monitor very closely to make sure that we can provide more and more values to our, our community and make sure that we can bring a lot of values in a fair way to everybody that support us genuinely. Okay. Mm. Are you afraid that someday there will be another project with more innovative technology that can replace your project? In other words, are you afraid of competition? I think not really. I mean, uh, for me personally, you know, I think competition is just necessary for you know innovation and it's just unavoidable, right? At the end of the day, uh, competition will just be better for all the beneficiaries at the end of the day, right? Uh, for, for people who, let's say the crypto enthusiasts in our case and for projects in our case. So uh, I think that we should not be afraid of competition. Uh, and also we believe if, you know, we can execute everything as planned, and we would be okay, especially, you know, when technology, you know, despite being a very important factor, is not everything here, especially in, in this area. Uh, if we can stay true and, and we can gain trust from our community, I think it would be very hard for other people to compete against us in the long run. Uh, so, yeah, I think just focus on what you can do and try to be better every day, then competition is not a big problem. Nice. Yeah, definitely like the attitude there. Thanks. Question number 16, what was your team's biggest challenge till now and how do you feel when you managed it? Honestly, you know, like uh, we are building something at a scale we have never done before. And, you know, in an area which was once new to many of us. A lot of uh, members in our team wasn't very, um, you know, like uh, acquainted with the, the blockchain world. So it's, of course, it's challenging, it's stressful, but you know, it's rewarding as well because we learned a lot uh, along the way. We were pushed to high limits. Uh, we had to learn and adapt quickly in order to make the best decisions, even, you know, with very limited information. So, I mean, fortunately, uh, we are used to this thanks to years of working as uh, startup founders before uh, together, right? So I guess until this moment, I'm quite confident that we are still on the right track and I hope we will be on the right track in the future. Nice. How did you get the community involved in developing the project and how do you build a strong community to grow globally? You have answered uh, a lot of uh, about the community. There's a lot of information mm. already provided by you, but maybe there's something that you missed out and you want to add. Sure. I think we, we always listen to the feedback from our community and we believe that, you know, Islander is built to the best interests of theirs. Right. So this approach has worked well for us in the past and we would love to keep it for future development as well. So that's why we run our product on Testnet, as I previously mentioned to you, and let people experience and give us some feedback. We will also run you know, on mainnet shortly after TGE to have more valuable feedback from, from users to improve and deliver an even stronger product in the coming months. And um, so a part about you know, building community globally, in order to do so, you know, we started with uh, global marketing, but then we built local communities as early as possible. Uh, to provide, you know, close support to, to our users in, in the most convenient way to them. Uh, so right now, for example, we have communities in, in Vietnam, in Turkey, China, India, uh, Indonesia, Russia, South Korea, etc. And we intend to grow uh, the local communities even stronger in the future, because I think that by providing support, very close support in the most convenient way to them, then we can gain their trust and we can support them in the most uh, efficient way. Great. Uh, where can I get the latest updates or more information about the project? You can update the latest news uh, or get more information about our project by you know, following our social channels uh, in the link that I put in the description box. And question number 19, uh, do you have any plans to release it as an app, basically a mobile version? Of course, this is uh, to be decided as you know, mobile has become more and more convenient and popular these days. But uh, we would love to do well in the web version first, and we are trying our best to do so at the moment. Uh, my philosophy here is one thing at a time, and we want to be very good at the, the web version first before you know moving to maybe like an, to, to introduce an app. But of course, as a web version, 
we want to make sure that the the mobile view is is also available and usable as well for our users. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. One step at a time. First, get that right, and then move on to the next one for sure. Okay. And the last question from uh, the community is on uh, when is the token getting launched and on what exchanges. So our our token will be launched on uh, January seventh. After we finish the IDE with Avalanche, um, so after that we will have our token listed on Trader Joe and Pangolin, and uh, yeah, that's the places where you can find and exchange our. our yeah, tokens. guys, don't miss out. Make sure you check it out. You don't want to miss this one. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you, Aviet Ann, for answering uh, the 20 questions from the community. I really appreciate it. It was very informative and insightful. Now it's your turn to ask six questions back to the community for them to win additional rewards and, of course, uh, do more research about your project. So if you're ready, please go ahead. Sure. So my first question is, what is Islander? I think this is a very easy one. And the second one is, who is the founder of Islander? The third one, what does the end goal look like for Islander? And the fourth one, how many of ESA tokens are there in the total supply? And the fifth one, what is the Islander token? The last one, when ideal, when minute. Cool. Thank you so much, Viet and for uh, your questions to the community. Guys, if you saw your 20 questions or one of your question was among the 20 that I asked uh, VN today, then you are one of the lucky winners and you can claim your rewards by following the instructions in the description box of this video. Also, if you would like to earn additional rewards, simply go ahead and answer the six questions that Viet An was asking you guys, and we will choose the lucky winners from the comments of uh, this YouTube video. Uh, Viet An, thank you so much for coming today and for explaining and uh, you know providing so much good and insightful information about Islander. I really had a blast. I appreciate your time. And uh, you guys, comment, like, subscribe to this video. Make sure you go ahead and follow Islander on all of their uh, channels and social media and websites to stay up to date with their releases. And until next time, we will see you later. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.